Jesse. Hey. Here we are. 42. How is everyone? Man, episode 42. Every time you wave that card, I say to myself, is that right? Is it like it's just it's it's always one more than the one before? Yes. I, I don't know what it is. I just I'm amazed that we are this advanced in the Rocky Files podcast. Yay. I don't know. How I'm do you glad. feel? How do you feel about that? Uh, good. Great. I mean, we have we're a year by the time this show is on Thursday. This is our right. one year anniversary of uh, the podcast. So yeah, it's, it's an crazy. exciting episode for us. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just it, I, I can't I guess our next one will be an official one year. So we're going to have to do something really special. Yeah. Like I, High school bands, tuxedos, ball gowns, <laughs> flowers, fireworks. I don't yes. know. We'll, we'll have to do something. Yeah. <laughs> Some big intro. I'll have to uh, wear we'll my see. beret. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> we, we have a, a, a amazing budget uh, here uh, at the Rocky Files. It's our budget is we have so many donors. They've deposited millions and millions, millions. of dollars into our, our coffers here. Mm. Uh, speaking of which, Stacy, where are we at this week? Where are we? Did we change it or are we still in Tulsa? Yeah, no. We, are we at, at at Good Riddance, New Hampshire or 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 Bittersweet Tennessee? Bittersweet Tennessee. That's yes. it. Bittersweet. That's it. Bittersweet Sweet Tennessee. Yes, that is there a real I was like, oh, my God, how cute. And go. I, want, I wanted to do Bittersweet because uh, my husband, Kevin, finally got an offer. We had... Here now, now that I corrected it, oh, I'm so prepared. Um, yeah, he had an opportunity that sort of just went up in smoke um, because I don't know the the company suddenly had new management and they froze all hires and we were like everything came to a screeching uh, halt and we were like what is happening right now? Right. So, um, yeah, and then uh, come to find out the company he's already with is developing their territory in Clarksville and in not Nashville exactly where we bought and we bought before we knew that. So, you know, just weird things happen. So there's no mistake. So, so that was pretty cool. So, yeah. So we went with bittersweet and I now have it updated. (laughs) That's great. This, you know, we, you know, folks running a podcast is not as easy as you think. First of all, you got to find talent. And so (laughs) Stacy found herself and then she found me. So, (laughs) So here's she, so right out the gate, it's the best of the best of the best. Oh, Un- unfortunately, some people may view this and see it as a Jean Claude Van Damme movie. And <laughs> I I tend to think of it more of a Spielberg movie. That's mm-hmm. how I see us. Yes. Uh, but we do have our Van Damme moments. Yeah. Uh, Van Damme it. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but that's okay. That that's okay. Hey, uh, how you doing? Ever since the little COVID thing there? Yeah, the blue, yeah you all right. I'm, yeah, I'm good. I actually, I think I don't even sound congested this time, so that's exciting. Yeah, and you sound uh, very good. Yeah, and we, I took my mom to her first doctor's appointment because you know establishing new doctors that's a little stressful. So we did that today, and um, sure. yeah, so I'm good. I'm good. And you, my dear, ah. how are you feeling? Well, so the bags under my eyes are starting to clear. The dark circles aren't quite as bad as they've been. Uh, kidney surgery went very well. Um, I mean, the nurses couldn't find the vein. I have this. Where, where, where is it? There. Ooh. <gasps> I know. Wow. Like, yeah, it was worse. It was worse. Uh, th- so the first girl tried. She couldn't do it. Then the second girl comes over. I miss put the shot in the vein and i can do it and nothing <laughs> the blood went everywhere over oh. the, and i'm like i'm looking down i'm like oh christ yeah so, and i'm like oh god i i i hope the doctor's on point today and so um he comes in and he marks the correct leg with a little purple marker yeah we're talking and and i say hey doc you think you can have something prescribed for me because last time you didn't have anything pain management wise well, yeah I can, I can give you oxycodone any of those and i go no i don't want any of that stuff i don't mm. want that i said just can you do something like in between? So he gave me this great stuff, which it's not a narcotic, but it's stronger than ibuprofen. It's right in the middle. It was yes. great. It was oh, the, it was the nice. ba- I, I have the name somewhere, but anyways, uh, there's a K in the word. But anyways, it was it really, really worked. The problem was 
I was uh, uh, talking to him. And for whatever reason, my brain wasn't working correctly. And I kept telling him, yeah, because the last time the Imodium helped me so good, man. The Imodium was really <laughs> helping. And I meant ibuprofen. ibuprofen. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. I kept saying Imodium. And he's standing there looking at me like, dude. <laughs> Imodium? Hey, wrong doctor. But... So anyways, uh, we got through that and I was really fortunate. Um, the actual God, how can I say this? How would Rocky talk about his pain <laughs> from put, having a stim put in? Oh, yeah. Rocky oh. might say something like, you know, it's like having, you know, neighbors. <laughs> They move in, they're there for four months, but you never know when they're going to throw a loud party and park in your spot. You know what I mean? <laughs> you never know. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. And that's what this my experience with the stint was. Right. Last time the stint was horrible because I had mm -hmm. dozens and dozens of stones still left that mm -hmm. were flushing out. Mm -hmm. That's where my pain was coming from. Now I have very minute pain. Um, I still feel it. No, the only thing, the only downside right now, I, have, I haven't been on pain meds for two days, but the only downside is that I'm I'm peeing a lot. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if we could say pee on a on a, on a podcast. Sure, but yeah, sure, we can. <laughs> sure, we can. We're not beholden to the one. yeah, we're not beholden to the FCC like those losers at CBS and NBC and ABC. <laughs> Bums. <laughs> so true. Yeah, no, anyways, that's that's good. Yeah, it's, it's 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 much better. It's just much better. So, um, ch check back in, everyone, for stint removal next week. <laughs> Part C. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, exactly, oh, exactly. No, so, hey, no so hey, who do you have? Uh, what what else is happening? What yeah, kind of, yeah. What do you got, got going on? I got some fun sh fan shout outs. Um, so first, uh, let's see. I you know our Rick Babcock right here. He I is love the Rick. One. Yep. Up in the upper left hand corner, he, as you know, we did his uh, congratulations on his uh, retirement last week. He almost and... has a Kevin James look in that picture. Yeah, he does. Like, real quick, you can almost see like Kevin James. You yeah, know, he does absolutely. And so he sent me a picture. He's got some new merchandise. He this uh, he wanted to show us this new t-shirt and oh it looks more black here it's funny when i first looked at it i thought it was more charcoal but the beanie here or the toque tim would correct me if i say beanie he's like it's not a beanie it's a toque anyway so that new uh hat <laughs> is something that rick is now offering so i wanted to show that off and say thank you also uh last week we talked about uh and i couldn't remember his name and he had met tony burton and tony burton greeted him by saying all your heart all your love you know and his name is matt is it matt bibbo or bebo matt bibbo yes yeah. he took a tour with me i love that he's a yeah. great guy so i just wanted to show this picture and finally get matt's name out uh and because he messaged me he's like it was me i'm like oh send me a picture and i'll put it up so matt is at matt ev on 7 uh 7 11 on instagram so i just wanted to show this picture look at look at how bright tony burton's face is oh, i mean yeah. like it's almost like who's more excited to meet who it's just it's adorable so tony, lo like, tony loved the fans tony loved meeting fans and matt took the tour during the filming of creed 2 we were up at the cemetery when they had moved the headstones from the front gate where they are now they oh. moved paulie and adrian's up to the top where the tree used to be they yeah. moved them to the scene for creed 2 and they were right there. They were filming the very next day. Aww. And and Matt Matt was blown away. He loved that. It was really, really awesome. Yeah. So I just wanted to finally get a name to that story. And then, uh, of course, our dear Roz had her 46th birthday. And so we just wanted to give her a shout out. She was episode nine. So if she looks like Annie Hall here. Isn't she reminds she me of like an Annie Hall thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she looks very good. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And she has a great story. She's also been recently uh, diagnosed with a cancer. And so her story is on her Instagram page and she's at Roz Runs on Instagram. And when we interviewed her, she hadn't been diagnosed with anything. Pardon me. Yeah. And, um, and when we interviewed her, she had lost a hundred pounds from running. And so that's what episode nine is all about among other things. But since then she's been facing something very serious, you know, like Joanne and, yeah. From the beginning, she's just like, I got it. I'm good. I'm just like, unbelievable. Just 
put on that Rocky hat and her, <laughs> and her boxing gloves, like right out of the gate. She's unbelievable. So I just, I, she's been an inspiration to people. I always since, hoped yeah. that would be me, but mm. like, you know, when, when diagnosed with whatever, like with these kidney stones, I just started crying and weeping. I was on the corner with a tin can on a little roller skate, just like rolling around the sidewalks, begging yep. for money. I won't be able to work. I was so inconsolable about this. It was terrible, but no, not a woman. Women, <laughs> they are just tough. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's true. I, I think once you're faced with it, you're just like, you know, that maybe that comes on, but I, yeah. uh, for myself, I don't know how I do. I think I'd be terrified and then maybe I'd find it, but right out of the gate. Oof, I, I well, hopefully know. we'll never, we'll, we'll never, never know. know. I don't ever want to know, but, um, but yeah, so She's just, I just love her. So happy birthday, Roz. And then uh, this was adorable. I did a quick post about Brian. Brian is so sweet. He has such yeah. a kindness about him. And he was, I don't know if he knew about it or not, but there was a trivia night at, at the local bar that he loves. And oh, wow. I guess yeah, he some kicked some major backside. He won. Good so that him. was kind of, that was kind of fun. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. And then um, the last thing, do I have everything? Oh, um, this right here. Look at this. Look. What is this? Isn't this adorable? Look so, at that. And it came. Here's the box. The it little is, box. Look at that. It's a pencil sharpener. Love it. Okay. I haven't had a wooden pencil sharpener, a wooden, a pencil in a very long time. And now I want to go get it just to use it. But anyway. Hey, Stacey, where did you get that from? So I got this from our dear friend, Brock Smith. Who, Look at him. There he is. There that he is. Episode, yeah, he was on episode 29. And so we went to lunch. So he and his daughter, here's the picture. He and his daughter came through. And this is Allie. She's adorable. And nice. so she's only like 19 and she's a sophomore in college. You told me, you're like, oh, you're going to be very impressed with this young lady. Can I tell you? She gives me hope for the future. Because, I know. Because I'm like, okay. Because sometimes you meet a young person and you're like, oh my God, we're doomed. You know, um, and but not with this young lady. She was lovely. Right. So we had a we had a great time. We went to a burger place. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, we started talking about the 80s. And so he gave me permission ah. to show his mullet. So here's nice. a couple of pictures. <laughs> there he is. Wow. See the hair? See the hair? Look at oh. the size of the waistband on those pants with the right? seven buckles. The double Holy buckle. Holy Jesus. Yeah. So that should, he should be arrested. That's offensive. <laughs> and then this other mullet picture, which I just, I'm Look like. Look at that. Rock, so epic. Look at that. Yeah. Vintage Business 80s. in the front, party <laughs> in the back. Wow. Yeah. So that is my fan shout outs of the week. I just had so much fun with the fans this week. They've been, That's they've amazing. been great. So yeah. Yeah. So hey. you have some cool stories. My yeah. Friend. I was, I was yeah. going to share, I was going to share one story in particular, but I see what time it is before I jump off on this story. It's going to be maybe a 10 minute story. Of eight yeah. minute story. Did our yeah. guest get here? He did. He did. Right. Do we have our Rocky files representative go down the hallway with, yes. you know, a basket, some swag, high end <laughs> champagne, all yes. that type of thing oh yeah all right. so he's taking care of for a few moments yeah, right for a few minutes just a few minutes okay. <laughs> we'll right. be well, with you in just a sec go ahead all right all right all right so um here's the thing um today i've i've been in a very 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 reflective mood maybe it's been since this little kidney surgery thing but whenever you, you have something like that even though it's kind of minor you do tend to think about mm, you know what if i mean i am 54 mm. i'll be 54 in a few months and so you know it just can't help but roll through your mind and I started drifting back, uh, thinking about Rocky Balboa um, in 2006. So uh, at that time, I, I want to talk. The thing I want to get to is what's right over my uh, shoulder. You guys will see a newspaper clipping right over my shoulder above the green bench. There's mm -hmm. a, a brown wooden frame around it. And I'm going to show you some pictures in a minute here. But um, in 2006, my life was not really great. Um no college education. I had just come off of going through a bunch of jobs. Police Academy didn't work out for me. Uh, I was rudderless. Uh, I knew I needed money, but I didn't know how to, I didn't know what I was qualified for. So anyways, I had this job at corporate management and I'm it's paying okay, but I ended up hating it. It was seeping into my life. It was stressing me out in every which way you can imagine, mm -hmm. affecting my marriage, just who I was as, as a person. I, I really, I was far better then I was acting at the at that time. Uh, not that I was acting 
poorly or inappropriately, but I was just, I was just miserable. And I didn't know how to deal with that as well as I do today. Yeah. And uh, so another thing I want to tell everybody here, I, I, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm Marlon Brando here. because <laughs> if, if you guys know the story of Brando and his acting, he didn't, he never knew his lines. He would always have cards taped to the actors or to right. a tree and he so it would be out of camera range so i just want to show everyone i just i i here's my little list here okay nice. here we are that's what i'm that's my view <laughs> my view okay so uh if if you see me you know looking off to the side i'm not being rude i'm just <laughs> gathering my thoughts so back then i, I was the mississippi river going north mm -hmm. i if you could picture a river gathering with a bucket yeah. arms in a bucket there would be nothing in front of the river as a river i would go in i would get water and throw it in front of me uphill that's how i was going through my life uh -huh. very very difficult going against the tide as it were right when rocky balboa came out when that movie came out mm -hmm. it said to me no no fool you can go <laughs> south let gravity take it take it on a ride man just yeah. enjoy and when I started letting go of certain things and realizing I could be more productive, realizing I had something to offer mm -hmm. instead of this stereotypical in the office yeah. drone mentality, I, I, I started feeling a little bit better about things. Now, I only thought Superman could change the course of rivers. No, no. <laughs> Rocky. Rocky <laughs> could also. And John Dutton. <laughs> right. Yeah. And John Dutton can change the course. Of, yes, of he another, can. <laughs> another plug for Yellowstone, people. If you don't know what I'm watching, go or what I'm talking, talking about. about go, yeah. go watch yeah. Yellowstone. Yeah. Yeah. So uh on the set, I'm 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 sitting on the set. I'm, I'm, I was there for a few days and I'm watching Stallone go through his paces. And and in in the 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 stress that Stallone was going through, I mm. only I only knew the surface of it at the time. Not until later I had conversations with him that I understand how how changing Rocky Balboa would be for him emotionally. And yeah. so, too, for me. So there was a guy on the set. His name was um, uh, Steve. And I write about him in Cue the Rocky Music. Steve was a large um, um, change in my life. He helped me change right. in ways I didn't even know it. And we would be sitting on this green bench right behind me. Mm. We would sit in the trophy room of at the Victor Cafe when Sly and the casting crew all went to dinner. There would be no one left there. So yeah. Steve and I would have a coffee or whatever. And we would sit there and we would talk about the beauty of Rocky. And he went to go get us another coffee, bring the pot back. And I'm looking around and over my shoulder, literally right here on this corner is where I was sitting in the restaurant on this green bench. And over my shoulder is this movie prop. Stacy, I sh I I sent yeah. a picture of the not the close up, but the like where you could see the whole picture of the, the whole picture, just the, the way it picture. appears on your wall, right? Yeah, yes. yeah. There you there go. you go. There you go. <clears throat> Here's what this is. This is an actual prop made by the prop department in Hollywood mm -hmm. for um. Uh, well, go ahead and read it. Rocky wins heavyweight title. Creed yeah. defeated in rematch. Now, what is the glaring problem with this picture, Stacy? Creed defeated in re what's the glaring pick? Oh gosh, Mike, I don't know. I None don't... you do know this, Stacy. I do. I, I have to quit the podcast if you don't get it, but you know this. <laughs> Look at the picture. Yeah. Look at the picture. Read the title. Read what it says. Rocky wins heavyweight title. Creed defeated in rematch. Okay. Think of the rematch. What is not lining up in this picture? I, I'm not getting it. I'm so ashamed of myself. I'm sorry. I don't know what you mean. I guess I don't know what you mean. Stacy. <laughs> what? What color shorts is Rocky wearing in Rocky 2? Oh, he's supposed to be wearing the black, the gold and black. And what is Apollo wearing? Red with white trim, right? Yeah. Whoa. Right. The wrong picture. Okay. Wrong I'm picture. sorry. Okay. That's yeah. okay. This picture <laughs> is from the 10th round of, of Rocky one. Okay. Right? Uh, okay. Yes. So that, so number one, that that's the one glaring thing. Okay. Number two, the article in that picture. Yeah. Under, that's about the national weather service. That has nothing to do with the, the, the fight from Rocky two. So, uh, but I was sitting here and when I was left to my own devices, I'm looking around. I see Stallone's director's chair, the movie camera. I see all this stuff all around me. 
And I just, I turned around to see what was in back of me. And it was this picture. Yeah. It was this picture. And right next to that picture in the movie is the mighty Mick picture. When Ro- Mickey comes to his apartment in Rocky mm-hmm. and he, yeah, that's what I looked at before they got a hold of me. And, and he shows him the picture. This picture is the very same one used from Rocky. And so they, Rocky has it as a throwback to Mickey an Easter egg. And I'm looking at this and I said to myself, oh, my God, wouldn't this be amazing to have this in my little Rocky room? And uh, at the time, I thought there'd be no way. No way. Yeah. Well, uh, a few years ago, uh, back in around 2015, Stallone partnered with Heritage Auctions. Yeah. And they sold off all of his stuff and he raised $3 million for like military families or something. And then a few years after that, like last year or something, it was Julian's Auctions. Yeah. And I think some people that bought from Heritage sold and whatever remaining things Sly had, which was still plentiful, mm-hmm. they sold at this auction and it was brilliant. And mm-hmm. um, this was one of the items that sold. And there was a gentleman online whose name is Charlie, who was an absolute beautiful human being. And I'm going to have you put his picture up in a moment. Um, Charlie followed me online, liked my tours, saw the pretender, and he really respected what I did. So he writes me this beautiful letter one day and he says, Mike, he goes, I, I, I'm so proud of what you do for Rocky fans. I'll tell you what, Julian's auction, go pick something out. I'm going to put a bid in. I'll try to win you whatever it is you pick out. I thought oh. it was crazy. I thought he was out of his mind. Who does something so nice yeah. and, and for no for nothing back? Who who right. does that? Crazy people. Right, right. <laughs> Crazy people. So, so I said, okay. So from the story I just told you, I saw that this was going to go up for auction. I said, it's got to be the newspaper clipping yeah. because it was very formative of, of my thought process changing. Yeah. Uh, uh, I started to believe in myself before I even saw Rocky Balboa. So. Wow. So he wins the auction. He gives it. He he, he brings it. Uh, he wins it. Gets it shipped to his house, and he says, "We start talking one day. I invite him up to the house in Feb. This past February, we have Maroni's Pizza from Scranton. If you ever get to Scranton, have Maroni's Pizza. It is the best pizza in the world. Oh, okay, uh, it's very very different pizza, but it's very very good. Oh, okay. and so uh, he brought his good friend uh, Paul from the UK, and he brought his son Connor, who was a lovely young man. Mm-hmm. I really liked him. A great kid. Anyways." We come down to the Rocky room and he presents me with this. Would you show the picture of him handing it to me? Yes. Look at that. Look uh, at that. Uh, now, look. Now I want you to take a look at Charlie. Charlie <laughs> looks like the old Swedish berserkers. Now, keep this picture up for a minute. OK. He, he looks like a berserker. He's got the wild man beard, the long pulled back hair, tattoos all over the place, and he has a, a thick British accent. Okay. Okay. He lives yeah. in Virginia and he's got a whole company and he's a very successful individual. And he's also an incredibly lovely man. I genuinely, I genuinely like this guy. And he's handing me this picture. I could not believe the generosity. Uh, of this individual and he gets it he gets rocky he gets the empathy of the character he gets the struggle of the yeah. character rocky is is charlie he's all of us that's yeah. why we all identify with this character so much uh oh. there's a picture i think near our front door sue mm-hmm. took inside the house with uh, all of us there it is all right so there <laughs> there's there's a, a a stained glass uh a picture that my sister-in-law debbie did of wow. sue that's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's Sue to my 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 sister in law, stained glass, oh, and nice. uh, yeah, we have that hanging up there. Then I got Paul in the pink sweater, who is Charlie's good friend from the UK. Hey, Charlie God. and his son Connor, and here nice. we. It, it, this is about midnight. And I have to be in Philly at 7 a.m. because we're doing uh, a big UK tour. So, and like, we were bleary eyed in the morning, man, because we, we had, a, we had, a, you know, something to eat and a, and a few spirits and so on. So, you know, it was, uh, it was quite the night. But, anyways. Uh, this is the oh, and I think there's one more picture I sent you, yeah, of them out front of the gym. Yes, the there yeah. you go. Here we are on the tour out there. I don't know, I think, I think Charlie's got blue blockers on. I'm not sure. <laughs> those, yeah. remember, those, remember those old blue yeah, blocker the glass yellow, glasses? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love that uh, old commercial, anyways. These guys were just about as heartfelt, sincere as you can get in human oh, beings. And I don't nice. think I've, I may have mentioned this story elsewhere. I never really went into detail about it. And I just, I really want to thank uh, Charlie for, for his generosity. So um, that's my little, that's my little story of the week. That's nice. I love that. I love how, I don't know. It's just neat how, you know, these people are so personal to you, you know what I mean? And Very how, so. how sincere, 
I don't know. You know, well, the connections well, Stacey, are very sincere. Yeah. Yeah. Stacey, yeah. that's why we do this podcast. That's why I wanted to do this with you. That's why I'm so for, I'm forever grateful that you had to come to me to ask me to be in, involved in this because it's it really is an extension of yeah. my tours because yeah. I get to hear the stories from these people, but the, mm -hmm. most of the world will never hear these stories. Yeah. So it, it's great if Sly tunes in and he sees it now and then or whatever, but that's not, even that is not the main reason why I do this. The mm -hmm. main reason I do this is to get their because their stories are my stories yeah. and you, some of them are so good. They're yeah. just so wonderful. You got, I want to find a way to get them out there and, yeah. and, and you coming to me has allowed us to do that. So, yeah. so thank, thank you, you once again for that. Oh, and, and, and that's a great segue. <laughs> hey, listen, can you, can you have Veronica go down the hallway yes, at, yes. at home office, have Veronica go down and um, have, we'll box up the swag for our next guest. Yes. Stacy, Stacey, who is our guest? So this gentleman, his name is Larry Brem, and he's coming to us from the West Coast. So we uh, we had to do a little bit of clock coordinating, <laughs> but we, we managed to coordinate ourselves. Uh, he he's amazing. He he has faced his own struggles. He went to a Julian's auction, I believe, as well. I hope yeah, I have he that did. story right. And uh, he's got a a lot of uh, very cool posts from that. Uh, yeah. So I might be doing some of those. I'd be a little late on it, but I'm going to be doing some of those posts uh, with those pictures he sent me. But I figured I'm like, you know what, Larry, let's talk about it all at once and just yeah. have you on the show. So Larry, here you are. Come on in to us, my friend. Boom. There he is. Hey, Larry. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Nice to see you. Look at you all decked out and the yep. hat and the t-shirt looking awesome. Wow. Thank you. Thank How you very much. How is it possible he looks better in the fedora than I do? Hey, see that? <laughs> we have to have a rule. Guests cannot look better in the fedora than me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You pull it off, man. You it look looks good. great. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. I took your advice. I went to uh, Barron's. They're local to me, so oh, I good. got fitted for it. This is actually the, the Barron's one. How's it feel? Uh, I mean, it's custom fit, so it's, right. it's, it's awesome. Perfect. But. Uh, as great. you can see, I have another one up there uh, that Sly signed yeah. uh, that I bought, but I tried that on as well, and it it it's pretty identical. I mean, I, I heard yeah. you you do the review and stuff like that, but something about a custom hat is you know you yeah. it, it's it's, it's very attractive color. a custom hat. Yeah, yeah. What what size Rocky? Uh, I'm sorry. What size Sly Stallone shop hat did you go with? <clears throat> uh, you know what. I think it was the uh, small medium. They run big. Okay, they do. I went, I based on my measurements for a slice of the loan shop, I went with the extra large. My whole life, I've been told I have a fat head. It started <laughs> with my mother at birth. She, I, she never, my mother doesn't know this. Mom, if you're listening right now, that <laughs> time when Evelyn, our neighbor, came over, I was upstairs by the grate that leaned over into the kitchen, and I heard you tell her that when I popped out, it was, I had the fattest head you'd ever seen on a baby. And you were worried about my well being going forward. You didn't think I could ever grow into my enormous cranium. So, on that advice, on that advice, I went with the extra large on the Slice Stallone shop. It was a fraction too big, a fraction. Uh, There's no way yeah. the large was going to fit. Large wasn't going to fit me. Mm -hmm. So, mom was right in that aspect. So, what I did, I grabbed some. You know that styrofoam black foam and it's got a sticky back you peel off to yes. put insulation around the windows? Yeah. And I put that in the inside of the brim. I fold it down the material in the inside of the brim. Oh, smart. And I put that around so it, it perfect. Perfect. It's, yeah. I needed I needed a large and a half. That's what I needed. Yeah. Um now oh, your hat, how long did it take you for your barons to come to you? Uh it was about two months. I my wife got it for me for Christmas. I think we went in October. Uh, we got it early December, mm -hmm. but gotcha. every, you know, uh, this was during COVID. So yeah. it was, yeah. uh, no walk-ins. You had to schedule your appointment. You had to wear a mask. Uh, the main guy there, I forget his name. I Mark Major. Name. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, told him by the way you sent me. So he was very appreciative of that. Uh, I love he, Mark. He's a great guy. He took me in the back and showed me the, the one from, uh, Rocky Balboa and, uh, right. Creed, yeah, which was really cool. That yeah. they don't make that anymore, and they can't. Get, yeah, they can't get that pattern anymore. I guess that right. fabric. Right. Um, 
which was really cool. So he he just took me to some like these real uh, and even some other, I guess, props that he's done or hats that he's done, which is like almost every movie you've seen. He's had some kind of influence uh, with his hat making. Did he so, take you? In, did he take you in the back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did yeah. you notice all the all the domes, like where the so the hat sits on your head? So the head are they're made out of these wood block curved domes? Yeah. Okay. He showed me some of them. On it was Sinatra. On another one on the shelf was John Wayne. Like he had wow. the domes that were made their hats. Yep. Uh, and so many others that, that he had there. Talk about uh, an impressive, and it's just this little, it's on the third or fourth floor of a yeah. building in downtown Los Angeles, right? They had a move a few years ago. They had to move to downtown LA. And and the, it's just this little thing. It, it's it's not like you expect a giant factory. And it's a small factory in the back. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and he had a few people working there when we were there. Not, not, he didn't have a lot, but... Uh, and he's able to do this, and and it's an amazing historical um, preservation of, of Hollywood. Yeah, it really now. is. I mean, even the uh, Mike. I don't know if you remember, but going up the elevator, it's yeah. a real old school elevator. It has to be run by somebody in there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, yeah. wow. Like, yeah, you, like you can't just press a button. Like there's a guy that manually does it, and it he cranks the thing on the side. Yeah, holds the gate over, and and you're like. I don't. Do I tip him? Do I make conversations? <laughs> right? What do I do? The heavy lifting? What do we do here? And yeah. Actually, the guy was very nice. Yeah, he was very nice. I didn't know if I had survive it, but I mean, we we did well. It was it made the the loudest noises, but the whole experience was was absolutely incredible. I really I had my name inside the brim, which really cool. Nice. Wow. I don't know if you can see. Oh, yeah, there it is. Right there. Oh yes. Yeah. Nice. Hold on. Let me just, hold it right there for a sec. Nice. Oh, that's sharp. Yep. And it's that just, is really sharp. Um, I added that so I can give it to my kids when uh, when they're older and there you they have go. a memory of something I wear all the time. And family heirloom. Yep. Mm. Absolutely. And I wear it out all the time. So I do you I, really? I, I, you know, it's my wife said to me. I knew you wanted to get it. At, and after I took the, you know, the experience with you, Mike, as I call it, just to let yes, you know, you side story here. I've been getting on Mike for a really long time. I took one of his tours, which I think it, he sells himself short because, oh. and again, this isn't a plug. Mike didn't pay me here. Okay. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying how it is. Yeah. Uh, he gives an experience. It's not just a tour. Like right. tours are tours, you know, you, you're done. It's, it's very scripted and everything else. But with Mike, it was like, he caters to what you talk about, what your family wants, what you want, what mm-hmm. your favorite movie is, what what you want to spend more time at, what less time at. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it should be called tour and experience on the side of his car, but hey, you know you got to do oh. what you got to do. But uh, your your tours and experience are amazing, Mike. Again, I, I still look back at the pictures and still have a great time and and all that. But um, when I got when I wanted the hat, you had convinced me to go to Barron's. I found out it was in LA and I was like, Oh, let's, uh, I want that for Christmas. So my right. wife was like, all right, we'll take you down there and all that. But she didn't think I would actually wear it all the time. Right. And right. I do. Every time we go out together, her and I, I wear the hat. Every time that we go somewhere, I like, I wear the hat. I, I don't like wear it like out if it's like an hour or two, that kind yeah. of thing. But, I wear it all the time when my wife and I have date night or, you know, go out for the night or. So let me, let me ask you something. I got, I, Cause I want to, I want to dissect a few things you said. So uh, when was your tour? Now I know it was a few years back, but when, when was it? Was it two it was, or three years? Uh, you had just gotten released. I was your first tour since COVID. So okay. you oh. had just gotten <clears throat> approval from the city to start doing them again. I don't I, I remember maybe first or second tour, but you hadn't done them. So it was like, it was the spring though. the spring of 20 summer. or something. It was, August. It August. was August of 20. Yeah. Okay. August of 20. All right. So did so, you do tours before me or no? Uh, I had done, I think, I, I think I did two, two before you, maybe you, okay. you were, you were right there in the very beginning coming back off of, off of Correct. the initial hit of COVID. Yeah. Yes. That I remember. Okay. So, the second thing, 
because I have such loyalty to Stallone and the Stallone <laughs> shop, <laughs> you kept saying, you told me to go to Barron's, Mike. Go to Barron's. Go to Barron's. <laughs> that was before Sly Stallone shop. <laughs> the hat. Right. It, that's true. It was way before Sly Stallone shop. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, I, and, that's good. And <laughs> to be quite honest with you, the Sly Stallone shop, it's one fifth of the price and it's just as good yeah. and better than, than this. I did that, but my wife got it for me for Christmas. It was my only option. Yeah. No, I, I, agreed. And when and I remember in 2008, early, it was maybe even late 07, when I bought my Barron's hat, it cost me about $1,100 back then. Now I know they've come down to 450. I know right. they're, they're, they're more, far more uh, um, affordable. Reasonable. Yeah. But more reasonable, but, the Sly Stallone shop, the, and this is not a plug for them. I'm not trying to go above and beyond. I'm just saying Sly still has the original hat, and it took him nearly three years to put this together. So Baron's Rocky hat is fantastic. I, I won't say anything bad about them. What I will say is that Sly took really deep interest and deep care for right. the Sly Stallone shop. And, mm -hmm. and again, I, he's not going to be mad or upset with that. That's okay. I just I just want everyone to know. Right. <laughs> it was before. <laughs> it was before. Right. We we had to do what we had to do before Sly Stallone shop existed and made the hats. It's right. Just... Larry, if we, when we were kids, could you imagine 1985 if the Sly Stallone shop was in existence? I, Holy Jesus. Yeah. I could never even imagine that. I mean, it would it, I mean, think about how much stuff they sell now. I mean, I my whole closet's filled with their stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Michael. seriously, I have I know. 20 t shirts, two jackets, uh, keychains. Yes, I mean, flip flops, I, pancake ma ma makers. I mean, you named Thunder Mike. I even have the USB chart, the, the phone charger. Oh, did, did you get that? Yeah. Did you really? Yeah, so now the other thing I want to touch on is I want to touch on um, your wife allowing you to wear the hat out. This is something I don't know from, okay? I would love to wear the hat going to the grocery store, going to the restaurant. But you see, there's a fundamental broken thing with me that <laughs> you don't have. When you put the hat on, you look like a jazz pianist. Maybe you're a <laughs> saxophone player. You, maybe you could be an artist for all I know. Right. <laughs> there's something irretrievably broken with me. When I put the hat on, yeah, hey, uh, you know what I mean? Hey, <laughs> right hey, into uh, character. I like the fried clams. You know what I mean? It's like, forget it. So Sue's like, no, you can't wear the hat out. Who do you think you are? There's yeah. no, there's no, you get no say here. The hat goes on. You wear the hat eight hours a day in Philadelphia for work. When you go, she goes, if you were a mechanic, would you wear your greasy overalls to exactly. the diner? Yeah, and, fair and I, point. And I go, mm -hmm. ah, hence why women are so much smarter <laughs> than men. Absolutely. But, I'll show her when I go out to take the garbage, I'm putting the hat on. <laughs> right. Damn it. There you go. Damn man. it. I'm a man. Damn it. There you go. <laughs> Anyways. So is there anything else that you wear out in public? So like you, you've got your Rocky shirt on now. Do you tend to go drift from Rocky shirt to Rocky shirt or Stallone shirt or whatever t-shirt? Uh, it, it depends on like, like, like sometimes I'll wear the uh, tiger jacket, the satin jacket. Oh, you really wear that out? God, I'd kill to wear that out. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. And you know, not only that, but I wear it with a spike bracelet on my right hand. Oh, I'm, I'm hardcore, so man. He's hardcore, <laughs> man. Hardcore. Yeah. yeah. I'm impressed. And, wow. and it, it's uh, it's crazy because, Mike, I think I told you that uh, there's this restaurant. I don't want to say the name because just to keep um, it private for Frank Stallone, if he sure. does, it, does go there, but. There's a restaurant I go to, and Frank started going there recently, and we we arrive almost at the same time. And the first time he saw me sitting there with with that stuff, and he was genuinely like appreciative, oh. like that I like not knowing he would be there was yeah. wearing something that means a lot to his family, and he yeah. actually told me that. Um, and that's, that's when we got into the whole story about the um, punk rock uh, club where in he New York. purchased it, and you know the the jacket, yeah. and where he got the bracelet. Right, right. Isn't yeah. that something? Isn't yeah. that something? Let me ask you this: There, what what is it about the character of Rocky 
that inspires you? Because we're we're gonna get to what what you're going through and all that and and some other stories. But what what is it about Rocky? Why why Rocky? It, ever since I was a kid, it just absolutely mo- it's motivational. Just where he's been, what he's been down and out, and how you can pull out from it. And that was me. I lost my dad when I was 14. Didn't have a pretty much had to be fend for myself since I was a young kid and uh, moved out to California when I was 17, just packed up my car and uh, made it work. Uh, so I've been through a lot of that stuff. Yeah. And now thankfully I have a beautiful family, a wife, been married 20 years, two twin boys that are 16 mm-hmm. and couldn't be happier other than, as you know, when we get into it, what I'm yeah. going through and yeah. uh, how and what, Rocky means to me even more so now. Yeah. Um, But we can go through all that in a little bit, but sure. um, Sure. I know that you guys want it. Number one, uh, Stacey, uh, how are you feeling? Mike, how are you feeling? I I wanted to get into that just a little bit from, I'm feeling so good. I'm ticklish Stacey. (laughs) I'm feeling good. I finally feel like I'm uh, like 95% there. So thank you. Yeah. And you're all settled in from your move or I am. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I am. Cool. Larry, don't get her going on that. Finally, <laughs> she's oh complain. I get the phone call. Oh my god, I have to move. Uh. It's so not true. But anyway, Larry, <laughs> he's such a liar. So did you want to talk to? Uh, did you want to go into the uh, Julian's thing a little yeah. bit? Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. yeah. Yeah, let's cool hit that. Story. Yeah. All right. So that was in December. Uh, it was right around my birthday. Uh, my birthday is December second. I think it was like December fifth or something like that. Or mm-hmm. Um, I have the, uh, did you guys, I'm sure you did, but did you buy the, the book that came with it that plays the song? Yep. I got okay, that. Cool. It was great. Yeah. It, it was absolutely amazing. That's what I wanted to, to get that in there that that's worth picking up if you find Definitely. one of those. Um, but being there, uh, first of all, I was told that Sly was probably going to be there, but he was in London doing something for his art piece from, mm. I, I didn't know this until I got there. I didn't go there hoping to meet him. I yeah. was going there to see the original, Rocky script sure. in person. I mean, how many people could say that they've seen that? Not like, many. Right in front of them. And what was really cool that they had the way they had it set up and I sent you pictures, but you could see some of the pages inside there. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. and just seeing that. I mean, I know that uh, the, I forget the book, Ta- Tashen book that we have, Mike. The, oh yeah. Oh yeah. The, the, Tashen, the big yellow and red book. Yeah. Right. So I have the replica. So, it's just something else when you're there and you see it's like the real Mona Lisa. Yeah. It's, it's, it's there in front of you and wow. seeing the Rocky script, Rocky two, the Rocky three, the shoes, the, I mean, it was absolutely amazing. I, I mean, I spent hours there just gazing at the stuff and mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately didn't bid on anything. I was a little, <laughs> little too steep for my blood, but uh, oh. yeah. Thank tell you. me about it. Yeah. yeah. Would I have loved to own it? Yeah, of course. But it just, unfortunately, at that time, well, even yeah. now, yeah, just too rich for my blood. Yeah. But to see yeah. it, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. To see mm. it. Mm. To yeah. see I it, mean, to be there. It was like being in a museum. Wonderful. Yeah. Right, right. The only thing we ever had before that was Planet Hollywood. And some of those things in Planet Hollywood were replicas. Like, how could the Jack Nicholson axe from The Shining be in all 58 <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of Hollywood locations, right? Right. So right. there were replicas made of yeah. things, but they were also authentic. Like New York City had the uh, Cobra car. Uh, New York City, Plenty of Hollywood had the brown poncho from Rambo, mm. Copland outfits, and so on. But to see that there, especially the scripts, that that is pretty, um, pretty outstanding. Now, did you take anybody with you from your family to see that? I brought my whole my whole family went. Okay. And they were they were okay with you <laughs> looking at that for a, quite a long time. You know what? <laughs> My my wife was very very supportive. She's she's yeah. my Adrian, and I'm a right. hundred percent. Uh, she's a rock. She's we have the shirts that say uh, his his Adrian. Oh my, nice, my Rocky Rocky. Yeah, yeah, we got nice. those. And um, my kids are very supportive too. They actually really really love the movie. They they loved your your experience and tour, Mike. Uh, That's nice. And. Yeah, I mean, they'll watch it with me. They'll, they'll want to watch it. We watched Rocky Four yesterday for you know Fourth of July, that type of sure. thing. Sure, nice. Um, but 
they had no problem, I think, you know, uh, getting back to what we're going to talk about in a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just diagnosed with cancer right yeah. before Thanksgiving. So yeah. it was even more meaningful to be there. Uh, and everybody knew that why I was there and yeah, uh, yeah. the importance of seeing all that stuff right in front of me with something that's been so, you know, important in my life since yeah. I was a young boy. Right. Right. So, so let's talk about your cancer diagnosis for a little bit. This happens, uh, this previous Thanksgiving, you get diagnosed. What's, what's the initial thing when the doctor tells you that you're sitting there, what goes well, through your mind? I, I, I can't so, I mean, I, I, I'll explain it to you. So I, I had a really bad pinch nerve. There had nothing to do with one another, just a really bad pinch nerve. And I could barely stand for a minute. It was just setting this like cramp. It felt like somebody was stabbing my butt cheek with a knife like wow. it would just drop me mm. and it was happening every minute so went to a chiropractor nothing nothing was working so i went to this guy who works with the los angeles kings hockey team and he was like well come in and let's figure out what's going on and basically said well you have a very very severe pinched nerve i'd like to get you an epidural uh but we got to get you an mri and so I don't just, you know, throw darts at your back and, you know, we right. make sure we hit the right thing and don't damage your spine. Right. I said, all right, no problem. So I go in and um, I get a phone call for him. He's like, hey, good news. Just wanted to let you know that, uh, you know, I located the pinched nerve. We can get you up and going. You're going to have less pain, A, B, and C. And again, I know this guy as well, just a side note. And he just starts beating around the bush. And I'm like, uh, what's up? Anything else you have to tell me? And he's like, no, uh, well, are you driving right now? And I'm like, no, I'm I'm home. What what's up, man? You got something to tell me? And he's, it's probably like a three minute like long of me just prying him, and then wow. he finally just says, "Hey, I want to let you know uh, we found cancer," mm. and um, I'm going to start crying a little bit a little bit right now. Um, yeah, I I understand. Yeah, it's frightening. Sorry, because uh, that emotion came out of me. Sorry about that. That's all right. Uh, hearing the words that you have cancer and, you know, yeah. knowing that I have my beautiful wife and my two kids to, right. to be around, it's um, those words. I, I didn't stop crying for 10 minutes. And then I okay. called my wife, who yeah. was uh, doing errands or something, and told her, and she cried for 10 minutes. And then... Yeah. We had a meeting with my kids and we felt the importance of telling them how, what it was. And in the beginning, so my cancer is multiple myeloma. It's mm -hmm. a pretty bad cancer. Yeah. Um, it's a blood and bone marrow cancer and it comes back uh, all the time. Thankfully, as we speak right now, or as I'm doing this, I'm 95% in remission. Yeah. Uh, I am Good. kicking its ass. Nice. Um, Good. Uh, sorry if I can't use that word on here. I didn't even think about uh, it. That. You may. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you may. Uh, it's the hat. The hat yeah. is what's doing it. It's like Frosty's hat. It's magic. Yeah. And uh, we. that was, I'm sorry, I lost track of what I was saying. You told the kids and then. Uh, yeah, so we had that. And then we didn't know how serious it was uh, with okay. multiple myeloma. If you Google it, uh, it's it's very grim. Yes. reports in, in in the beginning for the first day or two, you know, you're, you're researching it. Right. Yeah. And uh, they've come a long way from five years ago. I mean, right. five years ago, you had, a, if you got diagnosed, you had about two years to live. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm reading all that stuff going, Oh, I'm a, you know, I'm a goner in two years. And what do you start doing? You start thinking about, your plans for your family and, yeah. you know, plots and this, yeah. uh, your mind just goes crazy. But then I finally go in to see my doctor, my oncologist, and she's like, no, we've come a long way. You could do 13 years to 25 years. The, the medicines are incredible. Uh, the chemo's better and that kind of thing. And the whole time I'm thinking Rocky. Of course. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm serious. I'm thinking yeah. Uh, the, the, it's not going to beat me and I'm going to get through this. Right. Uh, and a few times, you know, um, you know, I've, there's a few parts in movies that I'll just put on just if I'm feeling down. Mm -hmm. One of them that I do all the time, of course, it's the, you know, 
Rocky Balboa, you know, you're obviously and how hard you get hit, hard you hit, you know, take it, keep on moving forward. Of course, the other one, believe it or not, is Adrian looking at Rocky mm-hmm. and saying, win. Right. Yeah. I play sure. that all the time. Nice. The win. And Mickey going, what are we waiting for? <laughs> Take this. You know, like, yeah. right. Uh, it's very motivational for me right now and what I'm going through. And again, I've got my Adrian. So she's been there and very supportive. Right. My boys are amazing. Um, it's It's been tough. Like I went to chemo today. Um, it, right now I'm doing injectables. Okay. So it makes you tired, yeah. irritable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hot flashes, sweaty, but hey, what's the alternative, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Death. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. it. So that's your options. Do something, do nothing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh that's what that's what definitely keeps me going is just it, knowing that I have something to live for. Uh yeah. I have something that I want to be around for. I want to be around for my kids. I want to be, wow. be around for my wife for many, many, many years. Yeah. And I could tell you all this stuff, the Rocky files, Mike's slice posting, watching Rocky, do all, all that makes my days just really enhanced with like motivation. Yeah. You know, slides has been putting out these long videos, Mike, yes. you know, you see They're the best. Uh, right. And he's just, he's just doing them on his own. He doesn't have a publicist. He's just doing nope. them in his backyard in Miami. Yeah, right. wherever he lives in Florida. Well, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. And he's just filming them, and he posts them, and it's so heartfelt. And that that stuff is just yeah. like really driving me. It's, it's been awesome. Yeah, it's 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 true. I I can't even imagine. Uh, I I like to think I would be as brave as you. Uh, Stacy and I were just talking about this. I like to think I'd be as brave as you. Uh, probably not because I can't even get a hangnail without having. Right. <laughs> I'm 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 really not great with that stuff, but I I got to tell you, it really is remarkable the strength that you can pull on and that you know you got your family you've got your other external sources whether it's rocky or podcast or whatever it is you know you do pull on these things for strength and um i i say keep going with it whatever it takes to get you through those difficult times now uh where uh, how much more chemo will you be going through uh well she had said she my last uh, meeting with her, which was like two weeks ago when she told me I was 95% is basically um, we've got to keep doing a little bit more chemo until it's completely gone. Mm-hmm. Then we have to get a bone marrow biopsy again, just to make sure it's out of my marrow. Mm-hmm. Um, but she might keep me on a chemo. There's different variations of chemo. There's chemo pills, there's chemo injectables, there's chemo radiation. Thankfully, mm-hmm. I haven't had to do the radiation. My body's been taken to the, uh, the injectables, the shots, and the pills, but it's a oh. lot. I mean, it it wears down your skin. I mean, you just, my my stomach looks like a cheetah. There's really? Blue, blue, oh. Yeah, oh yeah. They just they they inject it into your stomach with these big old needles, and yeah, you know they they put it in there, and um, then you go through the side effects every day. Tuesdays are my worst day because they they give me steroid pills too. Okay. And, Tonight I won't sleep. Like I'll be binging something on. Maybe I'll be watching. What's that uh, show you're watching, Mike? Oh, the uh, yeah, Yellowstone. Yellowstone. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe I'll start oh. binging that. Oh God, do it. Yeah. Paramount okay. Plus. You'll love it. Yeah, great series. And uh, this isn't a plug. What, what is it streaming on? Is it Netflix or pa- Paramount yeah. Plus? Param- okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. and and you might as well just get Paramount Plus if you don't have it. Buy it anyways, because in a couple of months you're going to need it for Tulsa King. Yeah, right. I know. Absolutely. So get yeah, it. I, have, I don't have it now, but I will. Yeah. Now, I want to get to something really, really important. Do you think now that you've been such a fighter going with through the uh, cancer and everything, do you think your wife will let you wear the hat and the yellow Italian cyan robe out to dinner at some point? <laughs> uh, the robe might be pushing it. Uh, uh, depends, she loves you. She'll eating. understand. Depends on where we're eating. That's true. Uh, she she loves but she loves that stuff on me. She, lo- she literally she loves... The satin tiger jacket loves it. I love uh, that's it. That's awesome. That's she, awesome. And you know, of course, I roll it up a little bit, like you know, yeah, uh, about and the floor for up, so you can see the uh, spike bracelet and 
You know, I guess the only thing I'm missing is the uh, gold chain with the uh, the, the crucifix. Cross. Yeah, right, 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 right. right. Well, speaking of crosses, and this has nothing to do with the segue, didn't you <laughs> tell me a story about Carl Weathers? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it had nothing to do with a cross. It was when I went to his house. And the weight machines. Me. Yeah. Well, yeah. Would you tell everybody how, why you went to get uh, uh, Carl Weathers' uh, weight equipment and uh, <laughs> how that all went down? Because so I, I personally found this story fascinating from you. So I own a sporting goods store that sells and buys trades, all new used sporting goods here in California. Neat. And uh, there's a mutual friend that I know very well. He's an actor himself. He played... Um, he was in the 13th warrior, one of the main characters besides yeah. Antonio, Antonio Banderas. Okay. Vladimir Kulkic. Anyway, so he was uh, coming to my store and he's like, hey, my friend wants to get rid of some of his old, when I say old, it was state of the art in the 80s. So he had a, an exercise bike, just to give you an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, he had an exercise bike that had like a tube TV in it, like I've never wow. seen any, I, I, I've never even come across anything like that. So wow. he wow. spent thousands and thousands of dollars on this stuff. But anyway, he says, I have a friend that has this old equipment. Could you move it? And I said, I don't know if it's that old. I mean, I don't know if I could sell it, but I can try for him, but maybe we could just do consignment. I had no idea who it was or anything. Yeah. And he just said, my buddy. And I said, sure. I mean, I mean, you can have him send pictures. He goes, oh, no, he wants you to come to his house. I was like, dude, I'm not going to go to his house. Like, like who, like, who is this guy? And <laughs> he lives in Venice. I, I, that's about, it depends on traffic, but it's about an hour away, 45 minutes to an hour away. So he goes, uh, well, it's my friend, Carl. I said, all right. He goes, well, hey, I'll just tell you who it is. It's Carl Weathers. So I was like, oh, I'll be there in a second. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, like no problem. Yeah. So we go there and his house is absolutely beautiful. It's, it's an old Venice house. It almost looks like, it could be a haunted house kind of thing. It's it's yeah. not rickety, not at all. It's just right, right, the way right. it's done. It's just that's just the way it is. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. Brett's everything's in. It. He takes me in. He starts talking to me about his equipment, and I'm like, "Well, where is it going to be?" So he takes me in his back. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So I, I I let's back this up for a minute. I'm I'm getting caught up in the story again. You're in your car. <laughs> Bye, honey. I'm going to Paula Creed's house to pick up a few things. Be back in 12 hours. So you drive down to Venice. You park what? On the street? And I you park go through... in, front of, in front of his house. Right in front of the house. Yeah. Is there hedges? Is there security uh, there's, gates? <laughs> there, there's hedges and a fence, yes. And like a, a gate. So you uh, go through the gate. Are you thinking Rottweilers, Dobermans? <laughs> No, he 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 knew what time I was coming, so I think he has a camera out there and saw me pull up. He sees because you he pull up. The, he opened the gate for me. Now you close your door. You're you're looking. I'm thinking what I would do. I'm looking around. <laughs> I go, okay, I'm gonna go to Carl Weathers' house right now. So you're walking this sidewalk to his house. He yeah, opens I'm, up the door. I, I'm trying to play it super cool because I, I agreed. Totally right. agreed. So I'm trying to keep it very professional because that's what this job is for. It's not Agreed. a meet and greet with, you know, Paul right. Creed. You know, this was, yeah. this was a job. Mm -hmm. uh, I did say he did. Um, his buddy did tell me to say, Hey, bring two boxing gloves. He'll sign them for you. If you decide to take the equipment. So I left him in my car and was like, okay, whatever. Now, again, this is eight, 20 years, 18 to 20 years ago. Right. And it's before cell phone phones or anything. I didn't even yeah. bring a camera because oh, again, man. I'm trying to keep it very professional. Uh, and again, I'm at his house. So I don't know how he would be about taking photos at his mm, house. Or, sure. You know, and so I didn't bring a camera looking back. I, I, again, I felt okay about not having a camera. So he takes me in the, the back. He's got a pool and then he's got like, I guess like a, an office and there's, does he have two golden retrievers running around the yard no, with no a fried dog. chicken uh, commercial on a no. TV and throwing no. a tennis ball and nope. were there Russians on the TV at all? No, <laughs> none of that. All right. No. All yeah. right. You're killing the fantasy, but go on. Sorry. But Mike, you like this inside his, inside his office. He had a lot of like, I guess, memorabilia from the Rocky movies. Like oh, he that's had the great. big cut out of himself in the, uh, you know, red, white, and blue stuff. And oh, really? From Rocky Four. Yeah. Nice. Like a lot of like big items that were in his yeah. back office. Now, again, 
I'm not, I'm trying not to notice them, but that's all I see. Of course. I, 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 you know, so I'm trying to still converse with them, but I'm geeking out. Like it's, yeah. you know, I'm trying to look to, so oh, does he have the trunks? Does he have the belt? Does he, yeah. you know, I'm like looking up and down, but I'm still trying to keep eye contact with him. But when he's not looking, I'm, I'm scanning like 360, like a <laughs> like spinning around. Yeah. You're and, like Spider-Man on the wall. You're putting yeah. webs out there and you're just pulling yourself up on the wall. Checking it all out, man. I would wow. do the same thing. Yeah. So he kind of, he brought me in there so he can pull up some invoices and like show me what he paid. And it was like, again, crazy amount of money. And I tell him, I'm like, Hey, to be honest with you, like with this old stuff, it's very hard to move because it's, you know, people don't want tube TVs. And he goes, I get it. I understand. Uh, but I wanted to show you what I paid for it. And I said, okay, cool. And then he's like, well, do you want to come in the house? And then I can show you some of the stuff. And then we go to the front yard, which where it was all at, but it was like on the side, he had put it there so he could start making room. And his house is beautiful. He, I don't know if, I guess I could say it, but he had a, like a fire pole that like went from his like upstairs down to his like kitchen area, which was really cool. Heated floor. Oh, like a firefighter? The, yeah, the like Ghostbusters. Ah! The Ghostbusters yeah. coming That's down awesome. the pole. Batman yeah. and Robin. His, 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 his house was absolutely amazing. Nice. And he couldn't have been so, he was, he was so kind and really kind of like, I think if I would have just been like geeking out a little bit more, like, Hey, I'm a huge fan. Can I just stay in here for like 20 minutes and be like, sure, let's take this out and that. And that. Yeah. But I didn't want to do his friend wrong. Cause again, it was a mutual yeah. friend. And yeah. I, I, you know, Mike, as you know, like when you've met Sly multiple times, there's times like where you feel like you can kind of go into things and other times you just kind of go with the flow. Right. right. And like, kind of like when you were on set for, yeah. I, I'm sure when you're on set for Rocky Balboa, you were geeking yeah. out left and right, twenty four seven. I stop. was crying. I was <laughs> crying. That yes. that's no lie. I was right. crying. So I, I know. I, I know how you feel. I I right. know it. So, I but at the end, uh, I did sell his stuff for him. I I he didn't make much money on it. I still have the they would return that back then. They returned checks to you. Yeah. You know, after I sold all the equipment, I wrote him a check for the amount of money that we sold it for. I have the signed check still from him nice. uh he signed two gloves for me but they're like 20 years old and there was with the old black markers you can barely they're uh, like faded yeah. into the vinyl of the everlast gloves i right. see yeah yeah but he just started, like i just saw him at that star wars convention um and we talked about the equipment oh uh, really like, oh yeah we talked about that and uh he, he did two extra uh, photos and he wasn't signing any Anything that wasn't flat, you could get okay. a Rocky picture, but if it was, he wasn't signing gloves or Funkos or, oh, see. or you know, mm -hmm. uh, anything 3D. It was just it had to be pictures or nothing. Mm -hmm. But my friend had called him and said, Hey, this is the guy that you met you 20 years. He's going through some stuff right now. He's like, Tell him to bring whatever he wants. I'll sign it for whatever he wants. So he oh. signed two beautiful boxing gloves and he, he was so gracious again. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, um, and it, it's funny when I, when I, let me back up, when I got, gave him the check, I said, Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, you know, Carl, I'll bring it to you. Don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll drive it to you. So I went to his house a second time. This time I just, I handed it to him. We shook hands and, and left. It was no, uh, Hey, come in the back. Let me, you know, we can geek out now. <laughs> at that yeah. point, that's where I would have went for broke at that point. <clears throat> because you already, the transaction is done. I would have said, Carl, I'm a huge fan. Loved you as Apollo. Should never have died off. Whatever. I would have just stroked his ego. Action <laughs> Jackson was a great movie. Predator, you should have won. Not the Predator. <laughs> you know, what an amazing experience to have especially being so fluent in the Rocky mythology and what it means to you to, to reflect back on that. That's gotta be something so special. It was, it was honestly, it, I mean, it happened 20 years ago and I still remember it like it was yesterday and yeah, it was very yes. surreal. And then when I yes. got to see him a few weeks ago at the star Wars thing, he remembered it too, because the equipment was super old. He yeah. wanted to get rid of it and he didn't think it was going to sell. And I was able to do it for him. So, in a way, I kind of was a little bit of a hero. Yeah, I yeah. Able to get rid of his stuff for him, That's and amazing. you know, do him a favor by by taking it so he can get it out of his house. Yeah. That's so, crazy. 
Yeah, it was a cool. It was. It's, you have a great memory, Mike. Wow, that uh, you remember. Uh, well, I love that. that. Was a great story. I mean, people tell me stories all the time, and I I try to come home and jot them down, and I try to remember as best I can. But yours was really one that that stood out. I remember you telling me that story as we were on Kelly Drive along the river. We had just left the cemetery, and that's when you started telling me that story. Wow, as we were going down the Rocky Steps, and I'll never forget it. I. I was so impressed with that story, and I'm just I'm so glad that we got you here to say it, Stacy. Yeah. Listen, before we we uh, let Larry get back to having uh, a life dinner with <laughs> Mayor, yes, you know dinner with sports stars, whatever it is, going down Carl Weathers' house in 20 minutes. Before we let him get back to all that stuff, is there anything you want to talk about, ask, or mention? I just you know, Larry, you're just you're lovely, and I I love how Rocky can be plugged in at any point of your life. You know, you lost your dad when he was really young. So you used Rocky to, you know, get you through that and to be brave enough to pack up and move to California. And, you know, you just keep going. And then, I don't know, you, you just have some really great stories, whether they be fun, like this Carl Weathers, like, what are the chances of that? <laughs> Oh, no. By the way, you're going to Carl Weathers' Crazy. house. I mean, you know, that's yeah. so fun. And 20 years later, he remembers you and you're facing the cancer. And that's, you're the example of everything that I love about Rocky. No matter what you're going through, good or bad, you can plug in all those messages, all that encouragement to propel you. And you're just, you're a great example of that. And I've, I've really enjoyed having you on. And you're going to be you. fine. You're going to do very, very oh, well. Definitely. So I, I want you to be encouraged. You're going to do well. Now, thank you so much. That's beautiful. I, I'm honored to be on here. Uh, thank you very, very much, both of you, for doing these, for inventing this, to take your time to uh, reach to others and you know promote, you know, I, I guess Rocky. I mean, the, yeah. the Rocky universe. I mean, that's yep. what, yeah. that's what we're doing, and that's exactly and there's it. so many people. And like you just, you were talking about the the guy that. Um, Gave you that uh, gift. Yeah. The guy with the beard and the tattoos and all that stuff. Uh, amazing. We come across people yeah. like this all the time. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Uh, and uh, sorry, I want to add this to the, the Carl Weathers thing. He, yeah. he signed two beautiful photos to me that said, uh, to my kids, that said, Your dad's going to uh, KO cancer. Uh, nice. I, oh, send that. Send that to okay. me. I saw those pictures. Yeah. You, you either sent them or I saw them when you posted them. Yeah. I thought that I was did. great. Yeah, yeah, it was. I forgot about that part, and we talked about it. So my mind was going to Carl's house and trying to remember what I saw and envision and all. That. Oh, and a side note too, we he did not have any. You talked about Predator and all his other movies he's done. The only stuff I saw in that office, like his back office, yeah. was Rocky stuff. Wow. Really? He might have a little area where he probably had like his costume from something, but mm -hmm. I didn't see any of that. He, the everything I saw that was out yeah, and about. Yeah. And maybe that's what my eyes were trained to see in the sure, in the first sure. Place, but uh, all I saw was Rocky, and I guess um, isn't that something? Yeah, that's but um, Stacy, thank you uh, very, very, very much. Um, it, it's I'm honored to be on here. Uh, if I can encourage anybody that is going through chemo and going mm. through cancer, is just to keep your head up high. Yeah. Um, do what it takes to you know get through it, and you know. Do whatever you have to do to get things to motivate you. Find something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what's got me through all this. This is basically good people, slice post, Rocky, my kids, mm -hmm. my wife. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's just, it's all in a in a huge circle of what I need to, yeah. to get through this. You know, and, and the bottom line is I am a fighter. There's, yeah. and I think some of that, you know, the reason why I am kicking it is because it's it's up here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it so is. Yes. If yeah. You give up, you know, there's so many you know studies that if people are just giving up in life, they don't bounce back. And mm -hmm. I'm 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 gonna fight this, and hey, you're gonna notice something. So I normally don't have a beard, Mike. I don't know if you remember me. I don't usually have a beard. Right. So my kids call this. We we they they came up with this idea called the hockey playoff beard. Oh yeah. So, you, so in the playoffs, the guys grow their beards. You know, they they play to the end, Stanley Cup, and then they they win or lose, then they shave their beards. <laughs> so my boys were like, "Well, you grow your beard, and then when you beat cancer, you can shave it off." Oh. Said, so when nice. you see me cleanly shaven, it's because I beat cancer. 
So. Well, I think that's fantastic. But another thing is, too, I you look like, I don't know if you remember, back in the 80s, Sly had the two Tonys around him. They were legendary in that in that uh, time period. There was Tony uh, Manafo, who was had several roles, uh, speaking roles. In, mm-hmm. He was in Rocky Five. He was in Daylight. He was in Nighthawks. Uh, he was in a bunch of things. But Tony Maffetone was the a Navy SEAL that I believe Stallone took a lot of um, uh, inspiration to write parts of Rambo. And mm-hmm. he is the guy when Rocky's running in Russia and, he, and he's training and we see the one Russian guy get out of the Mercedes, the black Mercedes and he's when running. When it crashes into trips. the banks. Yeah. And the guy yeah. gets out. He's got the stupid rabbit hat on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's Tony Maffetone. You remind me of him with this beard because his had the salt and pepper mustache and oh, the white yeah. skin. So go back and check that out, the two Tonys. And he was bald, okay, and he, well, but he had this going on. There you go. I'm there telling you. There you go. <laughs> I, you're younger and more handsome, but I'm just saying. Oh, thanks, you, Mike. You really do <sighs> remind me of that. Now, this takes me into our final and last question. Uh, this is one of my favorite questions that I ask all of our guests. 30 seconds in an elevator with Sylvester Stallone. What do you say to him? Go. It's that's an easy answer because it happened to me. Nice. So, yeah. So my wife's working for like a like a PR firm, and we go to this thing. I think it was called Love Rocks. Everybody who was everybody was there. And we had access to the green room, everything. And again, prior to cell phone cameras. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we did have a camera. But my wife had the camera in her purse and she was out like walking people on the press line and all sorts of stuff. And, you know, I'm running into people left and right. Kevin Spacey, Michael Stipe, Cher. I mean, everybody you can think of. I mean, it was like, you know, every it was like the small area, but everybody was there. So I, I talked to my wife. I say, ah, I'll talk to you a little bit. I'm going to go down to the green room, and get something to drink. So I, I was outside the green room at this time. I'm like in the main concourse area. So. I go to push the elevator and it opens up and slides there with Jennifer, just Crazy. him and Jennifer, nobody else, nobody else in the elevator. I walk in, Hey, how you doing? I, you know, like, Hey, I, I slide. like, so for a second, I'm like, I need to get a picture with them. And I'm like, Oh, I don't have the camera. It's in my wife's purse. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I was like, Hey, Sly, I'm a big fan. And, you know, he starts talking to me like, Oh, you know, I really appreciate that. You know, that kind of thing. I said, You've influenced me for many, many years. Um, I'm honored to meet you. And he's like, I'm honored to meet you. Like, I love my fans like this, you know, something like Jennifer. And I said, I don't want to, you know, continue talking about this. You know, I know you're with your your wife and I don't want to bother you. But uh, again, it was a real honor. He shakes my hand and just puts his hand on my shoulder and gives me like a, like a real yeah. nice hard tug on it. And then yeah. that was it. I didn't ask for autographs. I didn't ask for... Like I said, if I found my wife, I would have loved to have taken sure. a picture. Right. And it's weird because I found my wife later and I couldn't find Sly again. I don't know if he just did the press line, said hi to a couple of friends and bailed out. But I mean, mm-hmm. I tried to find him for the rest of the night. So that's the I, universe I, laughing. Yeah, that's yeah. what that is. Just that's so I could the, get that yeah. picture and uh, he wasn't there. Well, I, I couldn't find him. But yeah. Yeah. how long ago was this? Well, my wife and I have been married 20 years before we were married. So okay. 22 years, 23 gotcha. years. Gotcha. Again, it was, it was, I think it was an event called Love Rocks and it was like a benefit concert, but it was the amount of A-list celebrities there. It was wow. Sean Penn, uh, Jim Carrey, uh, the list goes on and on and on and on. But really the only one I cared about was Sly when right. I saw him. It was like, and he wasn't even announced. He oh, just really? was there. So it wasn't like he was expected to be there and like he was presenting or something. He just, I opened the elevator, there he was. And again, he was so gracious. Again, he's always so nice to his fans. He is. Yeah. He really is. Hey, listen, good timing. If you got to grab the phone, go ahead. Because it just said that uh, my battery was low. I I thought I had it plugged in. I guess I didn't. But uh, (laughs) hey, listen, I want to thank you. I definitely want to thank you for taking time out of your day and spending it with us. It's been remarkable. Thank you. Love you guys. And thank you again. I'm truly Love you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Larry. Fabulous, Larry. Thanks. Keep punching, my friend. 
<laughs> Bye. Bye. What was... a great guy, huh? I I know. I always have the same reaction because I love I all know. our guests. I it's know like, we do. It's so hard. I'm like, I couldn't pick a favorite. I'm not, I just I can't because everyone, everyone's experience is so unique yeah. and what Rocky meant to them in that specific moment is so unique. Exactly. And he just, I don't know, it just never ends. It's one inspiration after another. And I Agreed. just, you know, I, you have no idea how you're going to react if the C word comes at no. you like that. And I, 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 I have no doubt I would be flattened for a long time before yeah. I would find that, um, Mm, that that I fight know. i'd be i'd be terrified for a long right? time first um but his i want him to know that his doctors are correct they've come a very long way in five yeah. years and i do believe he's going to be he's going to do very very well so i i just want to say that again for him to hear this even after he's gone agreed um agreed. That, that he's going to do very very well so for sure i'm just a, a a very good interview makes me very happy when i get to hear things like that it's just it's awesome well we are almost out of here stacy however someone that we know has a birthday tomorrow now when you all see this it will be two days after i think yeah but tomorrow for our recording purposes is july 6th and do you all want to take a guess on who has a <laughs> oh stacy ruined the surprise I'm it's so Sly's birthday happy birthday <laughs> Happy birthday, my friend. I I hope everything just keeps rocking and rolling for you. You've yeah. been making amazing choices. And um, you know, uh, I just um I just uh so proud, so proud of yeah. you and all that you've done. And uh thank you for checking in with us and um, you know, being all yeah. right with us. We appreciate it. Yeah, and I just I just want to say thank you to him as well. It's this is our one year anniversary. Uh, our very first episode was his 75th birthday last year. So here we are a year later. We're just Man. so happy and I'm so grateful. And I always, I just love your long posts. So any and all the long posts you ever want to do, I, yeah. I love them. I, I pick up, you know, all that wisdom and all his experience. It just never gets old. So we do hope that you had a very happy birthday. Can't wait for him to put out a, a biography, autobiography. I can't wait. Oh, I will be in line for that. Yeah. That'll I will be. buy 10 copies. <laughs> yeah. I will, I will have a bunch of them. Anyways, Stacey, listen, we are almost out of here. Is there anywhere people can find you? Is there yes. any shout out? Who, who what, <laughs> where, when? Um, yes. Yeah, so I actually, I did all my shout outs at the beginning. <laughs> so, That's true. That's right. true. Um, so I just wanted to say, where am I? I'm at had me at yo and on Instagram and on um, at the Rocky files on Instagram. And we are at the Rocky files podcast on Facebook and Michael, where can everyone find you? Uh, so I run this little thing in Philadelphia called the yo Philly Rocky film tour. It's kind of fun. Um, I'll be getting back on board this Sunday. I'm back to work. I've been recovering from this stupid kidney crap. <laughs> Uh, so I am, oh man, I am going to be flagellating myself with tours <laughs> over the next couple of weeks. So I will be a, a busy puppy, but so you can find me on Instagram. Uh, you can check me out at TikTok, T-I-C-K-T-O-K, -T TikTok Rocky. Uh, I did that not because I'm an idiot and don't know how to spell TikTok, but you know what? Forget TikTok. It's an evil place. It's a malicious evil place. <laughs> But I think I'm going to cancel my thing there. I That's think we're it. pulling that out of the plug. I, 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 we're going to have to. And I, I, I wrote this uh, little book called Q the Rocky Music. Q as in press play on the Walkman as a kid that I would listen to the Rocky music to inspire me to not be afraid of life. So yeah. anyways, that's where you can find me. And I hope all of you uh, have a great week. And um, we will see you next Thursday. Next Thursday. <laughs> As always, keep punching. Bye-bye. <laughs>